What's up everybody, my name is Chris and today I want to talk to you about the line level signal coming from the Zoom F6. Specifically, how you might have to work with it if you want to use that line level signal to send to a consumer slash prosumer grade camera that expect a mic level signal. The main problem here is that these types of cameras, like the Canon EOS R, expect a mic level signal, which is not as loud or as strong as a line level signal. A line level signal is relatively loud, comparing it to a, for example, camera microphone like the Rode VideoMic NTG that outputs a signal that is not that loud to begin with, and the camera in turn will add its gain to that signal so that it is a nice and audible signal. However, a device like like for example, the Zoom F6 that I have here that I'm using for the recording of my videos, that has a line out and a headphone out. Now those ports have different purposes. The headphone out obviously is to be used with headphones and the line out is to be used, for example, to send that signal to another device where you want to further process or use that audio. One of the use cases that I really like to use a line out port for on those types of recorders is to connect it to my camera with a normal mini jack to mini jack stereo cable. And this way I can actually record the audio in two places. So I have the basically the wave file on the recorder, but for example, in case I forget to hit record on the recorder, it is also output to the line out and then recorded to the camera, which in turn has the audio signal in the video file as well. This can also be beneficial, for example, for later synchronization, because then you have pretty much the exact same audio and it is much easier for an NLE or your editing program like Premiere or DaVinci Resolve to then synchronize those waveforms if you're using that type of functionality. Now, if your camera and audio recorder aren't mounted right next to each other and this type of auxiliary cable might not quite be enough, you can also just use a standard extension cord for mini jack stereo. And this one right here is, I think, three meters, so you get plenty of room out of this. And that really is a great way to have one backup audio, so you have two audio recordings of the same thing, and two, also what I just mentioned, the better way of synchronization. Now that's one reason why this is interesting. Another one would be, for example, to use the line out port to go straight into another device that, for example, live streams the audio at the same time as you are also recording it and mixing it on the Zoom F6, which is all possible, for example, with the auto mix feature and such things. Now I'm going to cover more of the Zoom F6 and its specific features like the auto mix in future videos. But now I want to talk to you about the issue that arises with the line out port being as loud as it is and the camera not necessarily being able to work with this. And this little auxiliary cable might not quite be enough for you to make this work. Now this may not be a problem at all if you have a camera that can toggle its mic in port to be either a line in signal or a mic in signal. The Canon EOS R for example cannot do that and it always expects a mic level signal. Now this would also not really be a problem if the Zoom F6 would be able to lower the gain on the line level output. However, lowering the gain of the line out in the Zoom F6 is sadly not really an option because the Zoom F6 actually introduces a strong hiss as you lower the gain on the line output, which is not necessarily something that you want, especially if you want to have a backup recording. Now, if you only want to use the line out signal to basically sync the waveform to later, then this might be enough. But if you want to have a backup recording of your audio, then this hiss might really be a bothersome thing. Now, I will have links in the description below to different videos also explaining some things around this topic and going further in depth on certain aspects. One of those videos is from Curtis Judd, who is talking about his workaround and also the version that I'm going to be talking here as well. And I will have a couple more examples with different scenarios. Then there's also a video from Grant Burton, who actually goes in depth on one of the solutions and how this mechanically works, basically, how it electronically works 
and how this attenuator cable that I'm going to cover here actually works. You don't have to go over there if you don't want to know all the details about that. You can also just buy a cable, but I thought it was an interesting exploration on how this actually works and why it does that way. And lastly, if you really want to dive deep, I also have a link to a video from Point in Focus who covers in depth why this might be the case for the Zoom F6 and why it actually introduces this hiss. So if you want to really go in there, then that would be a video for you. Okay, so now it's time to dive deep into the line out of the Zoom F6 and how it does work and where the problem arises. First off, I have a couple sound samples for you, which basically rank from the worst possible scenario, which is basically just using a auxiliary cord directly to the camera and having nothing else set there. Then I also demonstrate what happens if you use the attenuator inside of the Canon EOS R, as well as what happens if you lower the gain of the line out of the Zoom F6. And of course, one sample that already shows you how it should sound and how it can sound if you want to choose a high quality solution, which however, costs a little bit of money. Attenuator in camera off, signal strength zero dB, on the line out of the F6. In camera attenuator turned on and signal strength still at zero dB. Signal attenuated inside the Zoom F6 with the line out gain set to minus 17. The Zoom F6 is connected to the camera with the attenuator cable. Now I think it's pretty obvious in the first example where I used the auxiliary cable to connect the Zoom F6 as the line out with the standard setting and the camera with the lowest possible mic input setting that that signal is just clipping all the way. That would not work at all. It would probably not even work for a good sync signal if you were to use that. Then the next test where I basically turned on the attenuator inside the Canon EOS R there, you already noticed that the signal might not be as loud. However, it still clips and that's actually a little bit of a strange thing that I'm going to go in more depth in one of the next steps. Then we also have the signal that comes from the line out of the Zoom F6, which is already lowered in gain. And if you are listening to that, just based on this audio sample, you will notice that it probably would actually work. But as I also demonstrate noise in the next step, you will see that there's actually also a problem. And the last example was actually using this cable, which is a specific attenuation cable, which basically lowers the gain of the signal traveling through this cable by 25 decibels. And this is actually the one that works, making a line signal into a camera workable mic signal. So this is the solution that I would recommend you choose if you actually are going to do something like this. However, this cable specifically costs around 30 euros. But now I also wanna show you how the noise floor looks on any of these four solutions and which sounds the worst and how you might be able to fix these. Now you might have noticed that the noise floor on the first two samples actually isn't that bad. However, still consider that the signal with that would be completely crushed because of the clipping in the camera and with the attenuator, specifically with the EOS R. So those are not usable because of the signal that is coming to the camera and the other ones aren't really that great if you consider the noise floor. So that's something to keep in mind here. But I also want to show you how these noise floors actually look. You can see the line port connected to the aux cable and then to the camera with the attenuator turned off. You can see that it just crushed the signal and it completely clips. And since this is not a 32-bit float signal inside of the camera, we cannot get this information back at all. And you can just see how crazy the signal looks and how it just is completely destroyed. Now, something to note here, this signal is actually the test tone, which is a one kilohertz tone at minus six dB. So that's something to consider here. And that's why it's this wavy form to begin with. Then we have the next one, which is the still line port to auxiliary cable to camera. And it has the in-camera attenuator turned on. And you can see that the signal is actually less loud. However, you can also clearly see that the signal is not nicely attenuated. It is clipped and then somehow chopped off or made less loud. So you still have a clipped signal and not a signal that is nicely attenuated. So basically with the Canon EOS R, it seems that the camera just cannot handle loud signals with the analog to digital converter. 
then you can see the solution with the gain set on the line out port on the zoom f6 to minus 17 dB. And with that, you can see that the signal is actually preserved. It is a nice signal at, in this case, minus six decibels, which is what it should be. And you also can see that there's a fair bit of noise in the signal based on the graph on the right hand side on the lower end. You can see that there's a lot of the kind of purplish color going on. And then we have the attenuator cable. And as you compare this to the one before, you can see that it also has a nice signal, in this case at around minus five decibels. And you can see that at the lower right hand side, there's much less noise going on and it's a much cleaner signal just going through at one kilohertz. Now this is the signal that is produced with this little adapter here, but I also wanna cover a couple of other alternatives and go more in depth on this. Now I also have some data on a normal recording with the noise floor, not just the line levels minus 6 dB test signal. And that is the one that you can see here on the screen. This here shows the signal with the in-camera attenuator and you can see the noise floor curve right there. And comparing that with the next one, which is the minus 17 dB signal from the line out port of the F6. And what you can see here is that the noise basically goes all the way through from zero all the way to 20,000 Hertz. And then on the last signal, this is again with the attenuator cable, and you can see that the noise floor cuts out at about two kilohertz. So that is really a nicer way or a good way to demonstrate how this actually affects the signal, how the minus 70 dB seems to be something that just has a overall noise floor and the attenuator cable is probably better suited for this job and shows a cleaner signal. Now you still have to consider that you will never get a signal that is completely clean. This is also still in my room with the microphone. So you have the mic introducing noise, the audio interface, all the cables. And of course also my room here is in a city. So that's never going to be perfectly silent anyways. Now, if this is enough information for you and you wanna move on with your life, then I would say the right solution is the cord like this one here. This is not the only cord on the market that is doing this, but this is the one that I have here. It's the Movo MVRC300. And I have links to this in the description below. Of course, those links are affiliate links and they help me make more videos like this. So that's always appreciated. Now, this is a relatively expensive cord. I got it for around 30 euros and it really is something that is not that cheap. Now, if you don't need that clean a signal, then it might be a solution for you to also use the F6's gain setting on the line out port and just use that. But maybe also consider writing a support request to Zoom, asking them if it would be possible fixing the line out gain setting so that it does not become as noisy as it is so that we all can benefit from this and this cord might become obsolete. But now I'm going to dive deeper into what is going on with the in-camera attenuator and also cover more with this cable and of course also look into another solution which would be the headphone jack output of the Zoom F6 and why you probably don't want to use that for this purpose. Now let's dive into the in-camera attenuator of the Canon EOS R and why you really don't want to use that for this purpose. Now this may not be an issue for your camera at all if you have a different model or if you have a different manufacturer, which does this thing differently. This may be just specific to the Canon EOS R. However, I doubt that because I have seen videos where people have talked about this effect also affecting other Canon cameras. Now what we're talking about here is a feature in the Canon EOS R which you can reach by going into the sound settings there under the wind protection and attenuation and then you can activate and deactivate the attenuation. Now the amount of attenuation is never really specified by Canon in their manual. However, as Point in Focus pointed out and I also was able to measure, this is probably an attenuation of minus 20 dB. However, as I've pointed out before, and you can see on the screen again, this is actually an attenuation that is happening after the signal is already clipped. So it doesn't really help much. Again, this may be different if you have a different camera from a different manufacturer or a different Canon model that does the attenuation differently. 
So usually we would expect the signal just to be lower volume, but not half the clipping that the signal has when it is not attenuated. However, in the way that it works on the Canon EOS R, the attenuation setting is garbage and I would not recommend using it at all. Now with that out of the way, let's go in depth on the Zoom F6's gain control of the line out port and what is going on there. Now, as I've shown before, if you lower the gain on the line out of the F6, you will actually introduce a hiss and point in focus, try to figure out what is going on there. And if you want to check out his explanation and his deep dive on this, you can check out the link in the description below. But if I can summarize it correctly, uh, basically what is happening is that the gain is reduced by dividing the values by a certain value. And if you divide zero, which is the noisy value by zero, it always is going to be zero. Now, this is something that I really did not expect from a recorder that's in the professional grade category of Zoom products and is advertised as extremely low noise in the AD converters and also with this whole 32-bit float thing. Now, it's true that the line out actually works as expected if you use something that expects a line in signal. For example, my Artemis Ninja V, that one can actually just be hooked up and set to a line in signal and then it works fine. And the line out with the zero dB gain setting is actually sounding really nice and it also has a very low noise floor. But the noise that you add by lowering the gain of the line out is just something that I did not expect and should not be happening. So basically don't use this if you don't want to have a noisy signal, but you might actually be able to get to a number that kind of works for you. For me, I would say the lowest setting that I would go is around minus 17 or minus 16, depending on how hot a signal you are working with. And that should be workable with the camera. At least in my test, the Canon EOS R was able to do that. Now you will probably have to either remove the noise in the post-processing, or if you are constantly having something happening like music playing, the noise might not be as noticeable as it is if you have pauses or areas where you don't really talk that that much or you don't have any signal that is covering the noise over. But if you really want a good signal, then the only solution is the last one and that's the attenuator cable. Now the attenuator cable, as mentioned before, is the Movo MVRC300. And this is actually a funny little cord. In this case, I have one that provides a monitoring output as well as the attenuation and this has a minus 25 decibel attenuation. Movo also sells one of these, which has a minus 35 dB attenuation, and that one only has the connection to the camera and does not have the monitoring cord, and was sold out at the time of me trying to get my hands on one of these. Now, how this card actually works is that you have a defined side, which is the line level. So you have this one here plugged into the line port, and then you have another end which is plugged into the camera port. And that's actually something that can be useful or not, but you can of course still use an extension cord with these and basically get your recorder a couple meters away from your camera if that's your use case, like I have in my case, the recorder right here on the desk and the camera standing right in front of me. Now, if you wanted to, you also have this monitoring part here where you can plug in your headphones, basically giving you a signal from the line out port, which you can send to the camera and also monitor at the same time. This may be useful if you have a device that only outputs one line out signal and you also, of course, want to monitor that signal. With the Zoom F6, this may not be necessary because it also features a headphone output. This cord will set you back around 30 euros, which is quite expensive for what it actually is. It's a small cord that just attenuates the signal. However, it was the cheapest that I was able to find. Now, something I wanted to test with this cord is how is it actually affecting the signal. And what I was able to measure is basically that this one here is an attenuation of 20 to 25 dB and the monitoring cord actually just routes the signal through from the line out port directly here. So this cable has no attenuation on the monitoring side and the minus 25 dB attenuation on the camera side. Now, one thought that might come to mind is what about the headphone output and why not choose that one? And I would say that's actually a smart idea. However, if we take a closer look at the noise that is produced by the headphone output versus the attenuator cable versus the line out with the auxiliary cable and lowering the gain to minus 17 dB there, then the story might get more interesting. And what I gathered out of this example and specifically looking at the examples that I have on the screen here, the noise floor 
on these samples are very different. The noise floor of the headphone output is at minus 65 dB, then the noise floor on the minus 17 dB line out signal is at minus 70 dB on average, and lastly we have the noise floor on the attenuated cable which is at minus 72 dB. So you can see that the noise floor is actually lower if you use the line out with the reduced signal strength even though there is this hiss introduced. But something else to consider there is that the noise that is added by the minus 17 dB in the line out signal is actually something that is a very digital noise. And that one is probably going to be really easy to remove in post-processing if you want to get that signal cleaned up. However, the noise from the headphone output, it looks and sounds much more unpredictable. And with that, it will probably also be harder to remove. So I would still prefer the minus 17 dB over the headphone output. And of course, I would absolutely prefer the attenuation cable because that still gives the cleanest signal. With all that cleared up, we're almost done here. But with all these tests, I actually also found another issue that specifically is happening with the line out and with different powering solutions on these devices. Generally speaking, with audio recording, it is always a bit of a tricky subject when you want to use different kind of power solutions and you don't just want to rely on battery power. Now, I really love powering everything in the studio with power from a wall plug because this gives me the flexibility to make longer takes and don't worry about the devices shutting off because of a battery empty. Now the Zoom F6 has great power options with the AA batteries that you can put into the body with the addition of the NPF style battery which you can put in the back and of course also power the whole thing with USB-C. With the Canon EOS R it's a little bit of a different story because you have to use a dummy battery because it is not possible to also power and use the camera with the USB-C port. However, if you use the dummy battery on the camera and the Zoom F6 connected with USB to certain devices, you might actually run into an issue if you want to use the line out signal to connect the two together. Now I compared the sound of a sound sample of all of these and there was no strong difference there. However, looking at the noise floor really revealed the issue. And because I was looking at these things beforehand with noise floor comparisons, that's actually where I found this out. And I was using the setup that you heard the first time. This basically shows that if you power the Zoom F6 from a computer or a monitor or any kind of accessory that is connected to a computer, and then you also line out to a camera which is plugged into a dummy battery which is also powered by a power brick that is connected to the grid, then you might run into this issue. Now I have tested different other combinations, either one being powered by battery and it did not reveal the same problem. Even powering the Zoom F6 with a other wall plug that is not connected to any computer did not have the same issue. So what I learned from this is that this type of problem probably only arises if you are using a computer monitor or a computer as the power source for the Zoom F6. In addition, you also power the camera with a wall plug and a dummy battery. Now this may not be something that you ever run into, but if you do, it might be devastating. So I would always recommend you check the exact same setup that you are powering your setup with, take a couple samples, record them and listen on headphones and not just listen for a sound sample where someone's speaking, also listen in on the noise and crank up your volume a little bit for that test to really hear whether or not you are having issues like the ones that you are having heard here in that sound sample of the first snippet. Now this is actually something that also was pointed out by Point in Focus talking about the Rode Wireless Go specifically and using that while you are charging it. And he basically found the same thing happening. If he was charging the Rode Wireless Go with a computer accessory, then the audio signal would have this weird noise. And if he was charging the Rode Wireless Go from a different device, like a power brick or a wall plug, there was no issue whatsoever. So again, 
check your audio setup specifically for these types of noises, especially if you're trying to connect things together. Something that I want to point out here is that the internal recording of the Zoom F6 to the SD card was actually not affected by this effect at all. So now it's conclusion time. And going back to the beginning problem, if you want to use the line out signal on a camera that does not have a line in port or setting, and you want to have that signal on a mic port, you either use a attenuation cable, like the one that I have showed here and linked in the description, or you find a middle ground in setting the gain output of the Zoom F6. Again, it might also be a good option to send an email to Zoom to ask them about this effect and if it would be possible to make this in a firmware update better so that the line out signal with a lower gain does not have this noise at all. Now, as we've also established, it is not really a good idea to use the headphone output because there you have a different kind of noise and that one might be harder to remove in post-processing. Last but not least, if you want to power the Zoom F6 with a USB cord and also power the camera with a dummy battery and have them both connected with a auxiliary cord, then I would recommend you listen in on exactly the same setup that you want to be using for your shoot to see whether or not you have this clicky noise that I found in my tests. And one thing to keep in mind here is that it might be a good idea to not power any of the devices on something that is a peripheral of a computer. So using a wall plug or a battery pack might be a better solution there. This issue is actually really kind of bothersome to me because I really like having my Zoom F6 connected to my computer to also use it as an audio interface as well as an SD card reader so that I don't have to grab the SD card from the back and plug it into an SD card reader and I can just go into the settings. This makes it really simple. However, at least now I'm aware of this issue and can work around it if I need. Now that's all I have for you today and I hope it was helpful. If it was, please give this video a thumbs up so that other people may find this information as well. If you have any questions or thoughts, you can leave those in the comment section down below and I will try to answer you there or make a video specifically about it. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos and I hope you have an amazing day. Ciao, ciao!